Washington has determined that Circuit Judge Elizabeth Scherr should be publicly reprimanded for her role in the trial of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas shooter. The 15-member commission found that Scherr, quote, unduly chastised lead public defender Melissa McNeil and her team, that she wrongly accused one of the defendant's attorneys of threatening her child, and she also improperly embraced members of the prosecution in the courtroom after the trial's conclusion. Judicial Qualifications Commission says Scherr, quote, engaged in inappropriate behavior while presiding over the penalty phase and sentencing proceedings by showing bias in favor of the prosecution. The report reads in part, quote, in limited instances during this unique and lengthy case, Judge Schur allowed her emotions to overcome her judgment. It highlights multiple points during the trial when Judge Schur's, quote, treatment of members of the defense team was, at times, not patient, dignified, or courteous. The 15-person commission, made up of judges, lawyers, and citizens, also points to Schur's treatment of lead public defender Melissa McNeil, saying McNeil was, quote, unduly chastised. The commission also specifically outlined Judge Schur's response at the conclusion of the penalty phase when she was caught on camera hugging prosecutors. According to the report, Schur, quote, contends that she offered to embrace defense counsel. Even still, commissioners point out that on April 13th of this year, the court determined Schur should be disqualified from post-conviction proceedings in another death penalty case, citing the same behavior from the Parkland school shooter penalty phase trial. The report also goes on to state, quote, the worldwide publicity surrounding the case created stress and tension for all participants. However, regardless of the gravity of the accusations or level of attention given a matter, the commission expects that a judge will endure due process, order, and decorum and act always with dignity and respect. Yes, um, at this time the defense rests, other than putting in our records. <laughs> We're not playing chess. I mean, will you please take the jury back in? Thank you. All right, go ahead and bring your records. To B, Nicholas Cruz Henderson, episode one record. Let me just stop. State, are you going to have anything ready for today? No. <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're us there was 80 witnesses. We're waiting for 40 Wait. more witnesses. I just want to say, this is the most uncalled for, unprofessional way to try a case. You, you all knew about this, and even if you didn't make your decision until this morning, to have 22 people plus all of this staff and every attorney march into court, be waiting as if it's some kind of game, now I have to send them home. The state's not ready. They're not going to have a witness ready. We have another day wasted. I, I just, I honestly, I have never experienced a level of unprofessionalism in my career. It, it's unbelievable. So, Judge, you asked, if we had any pretrial matters, you asked us to be here at 9.15. We were here at 9.15 to discuss pretrial matters. I have been practicing in this county for 20 years. Uh, you know what, I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to well, hear it. Well, Judge, you're insulting me on the record in front of my client, and I believe that I should be able to Okay, you can do that later. You can put, make your record later. But you've been insulting me the entire trial. So, blatantly, taking your headphones off, arguing with me, um, storming out, coming late intentionally if you don't like my rulings. So, quite frankly, this has been long overdue. So please be seated. You can receive the evidence. I will receive the evidence. And then you can um, put whatever you want on the record. Okay, but what you are doing right now is highlighting something and making more of a spectacle. So if your office, in general, does not want to facilitate and or incite violence, then we need to just sit down and move on. That's it. There were 18 witnesses, 16 or 18 witnesses that testified today. There was nothing that was said until Ms. McNeil made her point made, and, you know, we're moving on. But is the court going to do anything about maybe stopping it from happening again? When these people are upset about specific things that have gone on from that table, like shooting the middle finger up at this court and laughing and joking, Ms. McNeil, be quiet. When these people have sat in this courtroom 
and watch this behavior from that table, and they want to say that they're not happy about it, what is the problem? Judge, I have no problem because I have thick skin. But once you bring in my children, I think that's highly improper. I didn't even know you have children. I don't know what you're talking about. Your children? What about your children? For them to comment on my children is highly improper. Before this court to allow that kind of testimony is also improper. There was, I don't remember any comments about any children. And if there was, it obviously didn't, it came and went without me noticing it. Judge, I can assure you that if they were talking about your children, you would definitely notice it. You need to sit down right now. You're out of line. In fact, you're excused. You need to go sit in the back with your, with your, uh, Chief Public Defender. He's the Public Defender. Mr. Weeks, please ask the lawyer from your office to go sit down and not say anything else. To try to threaten my children and bring up my children is inappropriate. Go to the back of the room now. That just violated about every rule of professional responsibility that I have ever, I have never, if you're going to get up here and you're going to... Judge, I asked you to go sidebar on this matter. You, sidebar or not, you don't have one of your assistant public defenders say something about my children? Judge, the same venom that the court is expressing is the same venom that defense counsel had to sit through this entire morning when she their children... She brought up her children multiple referenced. times during the trial. Nobody knows if I'm barren or not. They don't judge, know about my children. Judge. Sit down. Sit down. Judge. Sit down, Mr. Weeks. Please do not summarily dismiss me. I'm summarily dismissing I'm asking you. Go the court. sit down. I'm asking the court. I asked the court to go sidebar. Go sit down. You don't threaten the Judge, court's children. Your everyone in this courtroom. Just did that. Go sit down. No, no one in this courtroom had to endure what we go had to endure. Go sit down. Miss McNeil has made her children a spectacle more than once during this trial. That was her choice. You have absolutely no right to have one of your assistants come up here and suggest something about my children. Now, please go sit down. Judge. You're Judge. inappropriate and out of line. Go sit down. Judge, may I have a brief recess? No. Go sit down. May I have a brief recess so I can speak to my attorneys? We're moving on with the sentencing, Mr. Weeks. So for the judge involved in the trial of the sentencing of the Parkland mass shooter has been removed from another murder case. Listen to this. She's accused of having shown unfair sympathy to the prosecutors in the Parkland case. The Florida Supreme Court barred Judge Elizabeth Shearer from hearing the case of death row inmate Randy Tundador. Now, following the Parkland shooting sentencing, Shearer left the bench and hugged the victim's families, as well as the assistant state attorney, who is now, by the way, part of the case against Tundador. The judge who presided over the Parkland school shooting trial is stepping down. Judge Elizabeth Schur just submitted her resignation letter to Florida's governor's office. This comes after Judge Schur was removed from another death penalty case last month. The state Supreme Court said she showed, quote, bias towards the prosecution during the trial of Nicholas Cruz.